The story I'm about to tell took place two to three years ago when a group of friends and I went camping in a forest behind one of their houses is easily one of the most terrifying moments of my life thus far. We walked six miles to we found an old wooden log cabin, which we chose to sleep in for the night. The first sign we should have left was that the place seemed fairly well maintained considering how old it was. Being done teenagers, we thought it was cool. Our friend had a cabin of his own, but it was actually someone else's. It's about 9 or 10 at night, and we've been drinking and doing pot when one of our buddies turned, looking at a window before turning pale. Noticing this, we asked him what was wrong. At which point, he informed us he saw someone out the window. Thinking he was just drunk and high. We told him to relax. Soon after we all headed to bed. It was late in the night when I awoke to the sight of the door and locking in someone walking into the cabin. I initially thought it was one of the guys too. I looked around and noticed everyone was still inside the cabin. Another one of my friends noticed the guy too as he tried to suppress a squeal fear and I bit my tongue trying to not make a noise myself. This dude comes over and starts stroking our hair before going to a corner and winking it while staring at us. I wanted to run, but I was paralyzed by fear. A few minutes later, the guy walks over and stares at us before leaving the cabin. Exhausted from fear and adrenaline overload. I crashed. The next morning, I asked if anyone else witnessed it. And everyone had except for the guy who slept in the bed, who lucky him slept through everything. We grabbed her stuff and left immediately running off, we noticed the man from the night before and one of my friends screaming surprise and fear. The man looked to be in his 50s or 60s with gray hair and torn jeans. We continued running till we made it back to our friend's house. Never told anyone what happened until now. And I kind of regret that if you're ever in the woods and see a cabin, I'd recommend not making assumptions and staying the night. But if you should maybe bring a weapon to be safe. We didn't and things could have turned out a lot worse. I live in southwestern Virginia, on the borders of Tennessee and Kentucky. I grew up with stories of ghosts in the area, and I never believed those stories until I was older. The story of why goes as follows. One night, my friends and I were leaving a church youth service when I took my cousin home. Soon after I walked my friends Cody and Kirkland home as well. Kirkland lived on the top of a mountain and Cody lived on the other side of him. As we're traveling up the mountain, Cody says, that was weird. Did y'all see that guy on the side of the road? I looked over at Kirkland who was laughing and then looked back at Cody. He turned around as though he was looking for the guy. There's no one back there Cody. Kirkland and I hadn't seen anyone. We thought maybe it was Cody messing with us or his imagination was running wild. Cody tells us the guy was wearing an orange shirt with camouflage shorts and had a flashlight, but we dismissed this as we'd not seen the guy or any flashlight. Cody continued insisting the guy was back there, at which point I pointedly asked if he wished for me to turn around and prove to him there was no one there. To my surprise, Cody said yes. I've known Cody for a long time. But looking at him now, he seemed more serious than I'd ever seen him before and even a little afraid. I nodded and turned the vehicle round to search for this guy it spoke of, we were going around a curve when Cody started shouting, there he is. There's the man. Staring intently. We noticed the outline of a man and a flashlight moving around on the ground. We started to chill for a second when another vehicle came around the corner, dimmed his slides and the man vanished. I don't mean he simply ran off or hid somewhere. There was literally nowhere for him to run or hide on this part of the mountain. I mean, the man truly vanished before our eyes. Seeing this, we all freaked out before driving back to my mom's my mom. Upon hearing the story couldn't stop laughing. She for some reason thought the whole matter was hilarious. My mom went with us when I went back to drop my friends off. We didn't see the man, so she told me to take another way home in case he had wandered a different path. Still, there was no man. Cody still sees the man on occasion, and has likened to calling him the flashlight feller.
but every time you see him, the guy seems to vanish into thin air. We still have no explanation for this. But ever since I witnessed this event, I believed in ghosts ever since. I'm a 36-year-old female and have lived with this memory most of my life. I hope to end the nightmares behind it by sharing my story. It begins when I was 13 years old in a small town of only 6,000 people. I lived in a colder sack at the time. And this made my life easier in many ways. Everyone knew everyone in town and in many ways that made me feel safer. I was told never to go four houses away from my own and never to go to the woods. Thankfully, my friends would always come by and visit me. We'll call my friends Michael, Shelley, and Connie. My friend would come down every day to ride bikes and hang out. On this particular day, we got it in our minds to check out the woods across from my property as we explored almost everywhere else around the neighborhood. We built a really cool forts and would take turns sharing ownership of the fort day by day. To get to the fort, you needed to cross a stream, but swinging across a vine that led to many a mishap. On the day in question, we had two boys Craig and Daniel join us in the woods, growing weary of our limited imaginations as they put it, Fred 13 and Daniel's 15 decided we should explore deeper in the woods. Being 15 Daniel made himself deleted the GRU, fearing being left behind my friends, and I joined the other two boys through the thicket of trees that previously blocked us from going deeper. Daniel, who was friends with my older brother, assured us he'd keep us safe. Exploring deeper into the woods, Daniel soon called out that he saw something ahead of us. Intrigued. We continued down our path until we came across a cabin. The cabin looked abandoned old. It had me quite intrigued. After knocking a few times in the door to make sure no one was around, Daniel began trying to knock the door in. I, however, was getting restless and went around on a path through the corner of the shack. I was about halfway down the path when I heard the front door, given then my friends cheering at their success. I shook this off and continued running down the path of my foot, caught something solid and unmoving that sent me face first into the dirt. Sitting up, I noticed a piece of wood. It seemed to lead to a potential hidden area, which I was all too anxious to discover. Getting up, I cleared the leaves out of the way and found a hidden door. I figured this must lead to a basement level in the cabin of some kind and called to my friends to come over. Daniel and Shelley were the only two to appear. But I figured I was in safe hands as Daniel was afraid of my brother, and Shelley was my closest female friend. Together, we got the handle and lifted the hatch into the pit below. It looked like an abyss of despair. But I wanted to know where it led Daniel stop before going and insisting he go first for our safety. I wanted to argue, but Shelley smartly informed me if something happened to him, we'd have a chance to escape. Daniel further insisted by saying if anything happened to me, my brother would murder him. Seconds later, Daniel was down the stairs and shouting, we should see something. I rushed down the stairs to see what he spoke of what I was overcome by a malicious sinister sort of feeling. I couldn't place what, but something was definitely wrong with this basement area. Daniel pulled out a flashlight and continued exploring. I slapped him in the yard and from the he had been here before when an accusatory tone. He looked away asking what it mattered when I felt myself growing angrier. I told him he could have at least tours he'd been in the area before and what to expect is the placement of must rot and dead animals. Daniel pressed forward as I began scanning my surroundings some more. I had taken maybe five steps when I heard something that sent the hairs on the back of my neck screaming into my scalp. Danny looked like a statue now, frozen in place. When I asked him if he was okay, he stiffened. But he said nothing at which point I felt even more afraid. Danny mumbled something I couldn't understand. And before I knew it, he was on top of me and shoving me towards the stairs. He yelled for me to go, go get out. But I was confused. Daniel scrambled up past me. And I thought I was done for, till he grabbed my hand and yanked me out of the hole. As I turned to head out, I could hear laughter echoing below. Daniel helped me up. And we ran as we all screens for the others. 
Everyone joined us out front when Daniel yelled, he's here run. Craig didn't hesitate to run. But the rest of my friends looked around at confusion. I knew at this point, Craig was not shoving us along and Daniel had encountered what was here before. It angered me to think that they bring us here, knowing it could be dangerous, but I had little time to dwell on it as we continued running through the woods behind us. Close by, we could hear that evil laughter echoing once again. This made everyone freeze in their tracks. Shelly and Connie began crying while Craig shouted no. And I pressed Shelly and Connie forward something or someone was pursuing us, and we couldn't stop moving. We had to make a home. We rushed over and down a hill and my foot caught a molehill, and I went tumbling downwards towards the bottom, landing at the bottom I winced in pain as my ankle was messed up. I kept praying this wasn't the end, and I wasn't going to die here as I cried for someone to assist me. Daniel and Craig scooped me up and continued running as they carry me. We were getting ready to navigate the stream when I heard a familiar voice, and I shouted, Dad. My dad and brother appeared and carried me while the other parents showed up to help their other kids. I was crying as I was being carried from both the pain and from the fear of whatever it chased us. Daniel was about to explain what happened when we all heard a scream for the woods. The scream echoed through the woods and my dad shook his head and said never again. One by one, our parents escorted us all home as we were left in dismay. While they all explained we were never to go near the woods again. I eventually was home safely confused, but otherwise, okay. I never got answers as to what that was in the basement or what it wanted. I've been left with more questions and answers. And every day without an answer just makes my curiosity grow. I'll always be left wondering what was in there that gave the chase also, why, p. I live in Burlington, Ontario, a nice lakeside city near Toronto. The following story takes place on a school trip in the 8th grade. In my school, everyone would go on two trips their final year at the school. One trip in the fall, which was usually a religious camping trip approximately 40 minutes outside the city and a second trip in the spring in Ottawa, where we would explore the city and visit museums. The first trip was boring, as it was basically a religious class extended by three days, while the second trip had more freedom and was much more exciting. This year, however, my class was allowed on a third trip. This was to camp. I will not name about four miles away from the Algonquin Provincial Park. The camp was at one of the many lakes in the park and was set up to be like a typical summer camp. The camps were spread out in wooded areas around the park as you'd expect, boy and girl cabins were separate. The girls' cabins were the closest to the lake, almost in the forest and built on a gravel road. Our cabin was the largest, but the most uncomfortable. The other cabins have windows that can open and shut, but ours were so old and appeared to be thin bug screens and a door that wouldn't very much close all the way. I never went camping as my family hated it. And this was my first impression. And I began to see why. The first evening out we were all gathered around outside the mess hall for a fun nighttime activity. The counselors told us about a hermit that lived nearby and the activity was to go to where he lives. If we did this in groups, but the activity seemed kind of random to everyone, all the groups were allowed and kept screaming as we eventually made our way to the hermit home, which was basically a log cabin. After we headed back to the camp, we never saw anything strange, but other groups described seeing a creep lurking in the darkness as well as a pair of glowing blue eyes in the woods. I shrugged this off thinking the hermit in the woods story was made up by the counselors to creep us out, and the eyes were simply one of the counselors. After we went to sleep, I was awoken to the sound of someone sprinting down the gravel road towards your cabin. This freaked me out at first, then the thought crossed my mind that it could just be an animal. That thought to pass is a herd of the gravel crunch. I stood her cabin. It was soft, but I could tell it was a person looking outside. My bed was right next to the door that wouldn't shut her lock and the screens weren't covered by anything so whoever was out there could see inside easily. I was scared, stiff and ready to scream, expecting the door to open, but it never did. The gravel walker outside soon ran off towards the woods. 
I chalked it up to possibly being the hermit as it was three in the morning when this happened. I didn't think the counselors will be up. I fell asleep again shortly after. This was the creepiest thing that happened the rest of the trip. It rained non-stop the rest of the trip and a few of the other campers got sick with the flu. I didn't have answers as to what happened that night. But the following year, my sister went on the same trip with her class. They'd done the hermits during the night activity as well, and nothing weird happened. But she explained on one of the days while exploring the woods with their friends, they saw the hermit sitting on a log in the distance. While I'm aware of the story isn't the scariest in the world, I was unnerved the realization that the hermit was real, and he really could have been wandering outside our cabin at 3 in the morning. It's been 10 years since my trip there, and I've never gone camping again. I'm a 21-year-old woman and this happened to me in the summer of 2012 when I was a 13-year-old girl. My mom, my sisters, her two daughters, and I went on a road trip to Sweden from Normandy. We booked a cabin a few hours from the border that wasn't exactly huge. There were around 20 cabins there, one big white house and the main building. When we arrived, we got the keys to the cabin, only to realize the place had a bunch of dog hair in it. My sister and I are allergic. And so my sister came with me to get the keys to the White House. Soon after we went shopping. And when we got back, we had a barbecue while playing volleyball together. I had a hard time focusing as I kept feeling like someone was watching us. I looked to the second floor saw nothing. My sister also looked there before it got cold at which point we all went inside, sat around the table, and played cards. I once again felt someone was watching us. Looking down the hallway, I saw nothing. Soon after we grew tired and decided to go to bed. My mom shared a room with me on the second floor while my sister and her daughters were in a room below us on the first floor. Falling asleep quickly. We were awoken 20 minutes later, to the sound of my mom's phone going off. It was my sister asking us to stop making so much noise. We informed her we hadn't and we were sleeping when she called us. Later that night, after falling asleep, I woke up again. But this time I saw an old woman in a white dress staring at me gazing into my eyes. The woman had curly hair and wore glasses. I didn't think much of this as I assumed I was dreaming. So I closed my eyes again. Before I knew it, my mom's alarm was going off as it was time to get up now. My mom got up and took a shower while I ran downstairs crying. You know that feeling you get where you got to get upstairs, or into bed, or someone is going to kill you. That's the feeling I had going downstairs to my sister. I helped make breakfast and so my mom returned from the shower. During breakfast, the oldest girl said she didn't wish to stay here anymore. But she wouldn't say why. I told my mom when used to go to the main building and explain everything that happened last night. When we arrived, the receptionist smiled, asked us if we slept all right. My mom said what happened at which point the receptionist stopped smiling. The receptionist informed us that we were the fourth group in a week to speak about the a woman and strange goings on in the building. The woman that explained she never goes alone to clean the building as the White House was the main house on a farm that burned completely down around the house. Everyone who lived on the farm died. We soon changed cabins for the final night, and we're informed we didn't need to pay because of the events of the previous night. When we arrived at her new cabin, one of the daughters needed to use the restroom but didn't want to go alone. I informed her not to lock the door and I'd be right outside. Once she finished, we went to open the door, but it wouldn't open. The air suddenly grew cold, and we started to panic. Once the door did open, we left got a new cabin and went for a walk. Later, after we went to sleep for the night, the oldest daughter said, Good night, Olga. My mom asked who Olga was at which point the daughter answered, Is the lady, she's here. The next morning we left at about 6 in the morning, we passed a large white house to find a new family that stayed there standing on the lawn. One of them was pointed to the second floor window. It was the same window we stared at the first night we stayed there. The one we first saw the lady in white in.
Let me start off by saying if this happened last year, I am a male, and I was 16 at the time. My parents own a pretty big cabin up in the mountains, and once it hit winter break, we will go to the cabin and stay there until January. I always loved going up to the cabin, because there was just so much to do. It was pretty big and advanced to well, we headed up there like any usual time. And on the first weekend, we were there my parents decided to go out for dinner. This meant I would have the whole cabin to myself, and I was excited to say the least. After they left, I quickly got a bunch of junk food and turned on the PS4. It was pretty ironic because I was playing a game that takes place at a winter lodge. The game was called Until Dawn, and it is a horror game. I had played for about an hour when something hit a window in the main room loudly. I jumped and my heart immediately started to race. I called myself and headed over to the window to see what it was. There was a harsh blizzard outside, so I gave up on looking out there. And all I could tell that someone threw a snowbell out the window. But who would be crazy enough to be out here during a blizzard? I tried to distract my mind by turning off all the lights or continuing to play the game. After another 30 minutes, someone knocked on the front door loud enough for me to hear. My parents wouldn't let me open the door for strangers at 16, but I figured I could still check through the window by the door to see who it was. I approached the window and used my fingers to pry open the blinds and peek outside only to be met with another set of dark eyes. I couldn't help but let out a screen that cracked as I jumped. I immediately felt my heart skipped a few beats as I tried to comprehend what was happening. Suddenly, a rock smashed through the window by the door and I ran into the kitchen to grab a knife before ducking behind the counter. I heard the heavy footsteps of boots and a man grunted as he walked. He headed towards the room with my PS4 and the TV on to look for me. Once his outline was out of view, I headed into the basement. My dad had a rifle in there, but I didn't know exactly where it was. I tiptoed to the basement door and shut up behind me as I descended down the steps. At this point, I was more scared than I ever imagined I could be, but I tried to focus. I eventually found an old flip phone and quickly called the police. I explained the situation, but it probably came out as rushed half-words. They told me to get a weapon and remain calm since they couldn't send anyone until the storm clear. I hung up and set the phone down on the counter as my chest aches from my heart pounding against it. As if the man heard me, he had smashed open the basement door and quickly ran down the stairs. I hid behind an open door. And since my basement was large, I tried to form a plan with whatever thoughts I could muster. It was a terrible idea. But I planned on waiting until a walk through the door. That way I could lock him in the room and run through the main floor and outside. It was hard for me to hold my breath, and I couldn't help but breathe heavily. The only way he didn't hear my breath was probably because he was grunting loudly. He didn't seem mentally stable, and he had our double-bladed axe from our shed. God knows what are the things he would have taken from the shed. To my surprise, he didn't see me through the crack of the door and walked by. I took two big steps and slammed the door before going to lock it. The only problem was I hadn't had the time to think clean really, and there was no lock. My memory gets foggy at this point and I hate reliving it, but I'm pretty sure it went down something like this. I went to lock the door and there was no lock. Before I could turn and run he had already kicked the door and it slammed into my face. I remember blood pouring from my nose and I stumbled up the stairs as quickly as I could. My nose was broken. I tried to get out as I opened the door and took off. I quickly got out of view because of the blizzard and I laid in the snow to hide. My body hadn't processed how cold I was since I was overtaken by the adrenaline and shock and the pain. After a few moments, I heard the grunts at the man come into view. He hadn't seen me yet but was following my footprints and blood trail. I got up and sprinted as fast as I could into the woods. I couldn't see a thing and tripped on something. I don't remember what it was. I fell forward and rolled down a small hill into a snow and twigs and leaves in my face, ah, when the door and whatever I tripped over had scratched my ankle. I laid there will seem like an hour, but it was probably only five minutes. I thought I heard his grunt somewhere in the middle, but I'm not sure. 
After I assumed it was safe, I slowly limped walk back to the cabin and hit my closet. I slumped down held onto a kitchen knife. There was no way I was going to trap myself in the basement to look for a gun. I'm not sure when, but I must have passed out because the last thing I remember was waking up as the police shined a light in my face. I hadn't any extreme injuries, or else I would have been surely dead. I was taken to the hospital, where my parents waited for me. This year, we are not planning on going up to the cabin, because I don't think me or my parents could handle being there. I just can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't tripped and fallen down the small hill and the blizzard. I know be staying close to my family and my switchblade this Christmas. My name is Lucas, and I'm 16. I live in Pennsylvania near the Appalachian Mountain Range. As a kid growing up, we would always go up to my uncle's cabin in the mountains that we also hunted at. There's a long driveway leading up to the cabin, and a big parking area with a spotlight looking down on it. It was in late November, and the night before the day the white tail book season. So we had our regular get-together at the cabin. There was a lot of drinking going on. So I kind of distanced myself from all of it and went outside to take a smoke break. And as I walked outside, I will never forget the sound I heard. It was a mix between an animal in distress and almost a creepy laugh. I am easily scared and quickly went back inside. And after a while the others went to sleep and it was just me still awake. I suffer from sleep insomnia. In my mind races all night. I was thinking about something random. When all of a sudden I hear the same noise I had heard before and was very disturbed. I eventually fell asleep and woke up the next morning, ready to go hunting. We got done hunting and I forgot all about it by that evening after supper. Night comes along again. And once again. The older people I was with were slamming beers back. So I just played on my phone. One of the guys went out for a smoke break and didn't come back for a while. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So my dad told me to go check on him. As I walked outside, I saw him standing next to my dad's car and yelled, Hey, we were wondering where you went off to. As I walked outside, I saw him standing next to my dad's car and yelled, Hey, we were wondering where you went off to. But then I nearly crapped myself, as I heard it and voice behind me say no, I'm sorry. I was looking for my playing cards in my truck. I turned around to see him walking towards me. And as I looked back at my dad's car, there was no one. I didn't want to look like an idiot in front of anyone else. So I mentioned it only to my dad. He told me I must have seen the shadow of a tree or something. He is a Christian and refuses to believe in anything that's like paranormal. So the next morning, we hear a shot ring out and come to find out my uncle was shot a deer. We help him collect and clean it and hang it up so we can butcher it. They then all celebrated by drinking more beer and I was once again left out. It was around 4 p.m. now, so we were about to eat the deer my uncle had shot when my uncle said something. He said that's funny. I could have sworn I put the chops over the grill to cook but shook it off as being a coyote or something. So we ate our supper and once again it was nighttime and we are all getting ready to go to bed again. Again, I couldn't sleep. So I set up on my phone and play games. I forgot to mention that whenever my uncle shoot a deer, he throws all the guts into a pit we call the feeding trial, as there are a lot of coyotes in the area, just a way of giving back to the wildlife I guess. Anyway, I was laying up in bed when I heard that same noise again, it sounded farther away, and I wasn't worried about going and taking a look outside to maybe try and put an image to the strange and creepy noise I was hearing. So I looked out the front door, and I saw it. It was on all fours eating the guts out of the feeding trough. And I thought it was a coyote at first, but then it stood up and it was looking straight at me. I couldn't see his face. But I could see shadows from the top of his head, which I perceived to be horns, maybe I didn't even bother moving a muscle. Way too afraid it would come charging at the door. It stared at the cabin for just a few minutes. And then it got down and tried it off and just disappear. I told my dad what happened the next morning and again he denied it was anything. He just thought that I was going crazy or something. 
luckily, that was the last night I was staying there. The next day I went online to Google anything that had any similarities to what I saw. I guess it could have been a skinwalker a week ago, but I was never able to put a name to it. It still creeps me out to this day. And even though my uncle has sold that cabin since I will never stepped foot in those mountains again, I'm still scared to even look out my window at night. I just never want to see anything like that ever again.